The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Howdy, 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 everybody, and welcome to Thespian Talk. First, it's been two weeks since we had a full episode out. Last week, I put out a... A, uh, an encore file just so guys would have something on the uh, thing some of it will probably I'll probably touch on what I talked about on that one on this show as well so small repeat but they're not as big as some of the, a lot of the other stuff we have to talk about uh, I am your host Gomer the Ranting Thespian and with me is the cat hello everyone and we also have Michelle here with us hello ah uh, so yeah two weeks like I said two weeks a couple of weeks ago uh Last week, I had just gotten back from uh, uh, Kissimmee, down like near Orlando and all of that. The, Dis- the Disney area, basically. Um, and so the week pre- prior to that, I was I was down there, and it was it was nice. It was nice to have some relaxing times. Uh, I died for a little while at Disney Springs. That was fun. <laughs> and then you came back. Yay. Yes. Yay! <laughs> yes. And, and 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 the reason was the reason why I, I I put it like that because one, that's really how it felt. And also, I am a, a big boy. You know, people who have seen my face, seen pictures of me, seen me in person, they can attest to that. I am a big boy. I retain heat pretty well. And and they and you know they say if you're going like somewhere like Disney, Disney Springs, which used to be downtown Disney, yeah, you, know, you can go there for free. You can park whatever. And I don't normally stay there long enough for you know the heat to be an issue. But that that particular day, I went and I discovered they have a Coke. They have like a uh, Coke store with a Coke bar at the top, which, which I think is awesome. I'm sad to say that I can't just get like cans of Beverly. Which, if I could, oh my God, I would be sending some out to both Becky and Mel, <laughs> because I would voice that upon people I care about, because he's funny, and I know. I have to well- ask- huh? I'm sorry. Go ahead. What is Beverly? Because I, I remember I, I listened to the show last week and you, you were talking about it and like saying this is thing that I, I, I'm imagining is not 100% nice, but I don't know anything about it. Oh, uh, Kat, have you had Beverly? I don't know what you're talking about at all. Okay. <laughs> Beverly is a Coke product that was more mass produced in Italy up until I think like the late 2000, like 2009, 2010, something like that. And... Nowadays, it's just relegated to, you know, taste tests and, like, Coke museums and Coke bars and all of that. And it's become pretty infamous for having a really, really horrible aftertaste. And this is something you wanted on purpose? Yes. (laughs) Specifically (laughs) so I can film myself doing it and also send it to other people and inflict it upon them and see their reactions. Oh, I see. The lols. Yes, the lols. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't have that. They do have, um, they do have like uh, sampler trays of different pops, different Coke products from around the world, including Beverly. And they even have an alcoholic drink called Reve- Beverly's Revenge, which I was driving, I couldn't have it. Hmm. Um, so I just, I just got some surge, and, and and while it was nice, you know, had some had some ice in it, so it wasn't like all sugar water. Um, and then I said, you know what? They they have like boats that go back and forth between like three different points at Disney Springs. I don't think they had it at the original Downtown Disney. It's it, it, that it's more of a new thing. Bear in mind, the last time I went to that area was two thousand four, two thousand three. So, yeah. yeah, like I remember the one of the last times I went there, they still had the Lego Dragon. Okay, that's that's <laughs> that's how long it's been. So Do they not, they don't have that there. No, they don't have that there anymore. Yeah, oh, that's sad. It is, mm-hmm. but the boats were fun. It was, it was it, I could just sat on there, enjoyed the boat ride, got over to the Cirque du, Cirque du Soleil side, and I'm like, you know what? I'm 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 gonna call it a day, just going home, you know, going back to the condo. And as I'm starting to walk, I'm, I'm I feel myself starting to kind of get a little too hot, mainly because I'm wearing 75% black. <laughs> <laughs> just how it happened that day, and right. and from there my my uh, my body sometimes it, it has sometimes if there's too quick of a temperature change 
it it decides I, I don't think I could put this any more delicately than uh, it decides it wants to deploy the asshole <laughs> I can't put it any more delicately than that so you add that plus the heat from that plus already overheating I was about to pass out thankfully I was close enough to a restroom and I managed to get to it got got on got on, got on the thing got got my business taken care of, died for a few minutes, and then came back. <laughs> and then quickly got some water. Um, yes. Uh, although, on the upside, I had my uh, Pokeball Plus going, and I spun the Pokes, and I was, and I could tell you I was there probably about 10-15 minutes, because there were like three th three sets of uh, alerts, because there were two Pokestops nearby that said, hey, you got X number of items from the Pokestop, and it only does it like every five minutes. Mm. So... So there's the initial one, and then there were two other ones. So it's like, damn. Uh, scared. I, I, I think I scared the hell out of Becky, though, and, and I, I feel bad about it, but it, it's... Honestly, I didn't mean to! <laughs> uh, although, although I do... Although the fact that I can say I died for a little while is kind of kind of fun, just to get some reactions. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so... But other than that, not much... Not much to report from my time down in, in the central Florida area got, you know, got to see some places. I found out they have a Giordano's down there, which if you've never had Giordano's, it's a Chicago based pizza joint, pizza restaurant, really good deep dish pizza. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, but I'd only seen them in like Chicago area, the Chicagoland area in Indianapolis. I hadn't seen it down in Florida until then. Uh, but it, it was, it was good times. Good times. Nice. Ah, uh, so, uh, so, Kat, have you been the past two weeks? I've been okay. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to fight a case of bronchitis. I've I've oh. had bronchitis and pneumonia several times over the, like the last two years. Mm -hmm. I've had pneumonia like twice and bronchitis like four or five times. Um, so like I know when it's coming, I can feel it, and it's just like it's triggered by like allergies and shit. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been like fighting it and fighting it and I've mostly spent like I'm still going into work but like every moment as soon as I get home from work I just lay in bed and go Ugh, and then <laughs> take a bit of my inhaler and go Ugh, and then hook myself up to the nebulizer because I have had a nebulizer at this point at home and do a breathing treatment for like 20 minutes several times a day and like the last two days have been the first time where I haven't needed the inhaler or the nebulizer which is of course <laughs> immediately after I picked up a new prescription for my nebulizer medication <laughs> so i was like i'm gonna put in a, a refill because i'm almost out and then i'm like oh fuck i don't think i need it yeah mm. i'm crossing my fingers that i don't i'd rather have spent the money and not need it yeah definitely <laughs> will uh, it stall what can you stall them can no i actually already picked it up um because i'll need it eventually it's it's like a steroid medication um it's and it's only like seven bucks. It's really not bad for oh, wow. for like uh, I think it's like um, twenty five little treatments. I think hmm. um, however many you get, I can't remember now. But it's yeah, I think it's like twenty five treatments or something. It's really uh, a good a good value <coughs> for uh, being able to fucking breathe. Yeah, um, yeah. But that's been my last few weeks. It was my birthday last week so now happy I birthday feel yes. old yeah you <laughs> let's let's see wait you, wait your age is is, is sh, you, you your, your age is now the yes. rule same number as a popular rule on the internet isn't it <laughs> uh well i think there is actually like a hundred something rules so everybody's age is probably a rule but the one of the more <laughs> famous ones yes yeah um <laughs> Yeah, and if you guys can extrapolate it from there, good for you. <laughs> I'm not really ashamed of being in my 30s. Um, I'm still the I, oldest. Well, when I, Aaron's not here. Yeah. I'm, I'm on that, that slow march to 35. I expect mm -hmm. I can have a midlife crisis after next year. Is that the is that the rule? Is that how it goes? Uh, Are you allowed to start having your midlife well, crisis after 35? Well, I would imagine if you start having your midlife crisis at 35, you're going to die at 70. Well, yeah. I mean, 
I've had bronchitis like five to six times and like pneumonia <laughs> twice, so I'm not expecting to live as long as other people. This is this is fair. <laughs> so legit, this is totally off topic, but my grandmother is ninety nine years old. Awesome. Oh damn. And every every couple of months we're like, Oh, grandma's not doing real well. She's mm -hmm. we're taking grandma to the hospital. Grandma's on this new medication. I don't know. And uh and then she's fucking fine. And we're like, This doesn't make sense. Yeah. No other human being in our family is going to live that long because there's just something different about her. I don't know, it, like, and she's just the nicest, sweetest lady. She can't hear her for a, a damn thing. She can't hear a damn thing. But we take her out to lunch every week and just, like, constantly being around her. And we're like, Grandma, you got to make it to November for your 100th birthday. Yeah. She's like, I don't want to. Uh... <laughs> Oh, it's hilarious. I love my grandmother. She's so cool. Oh, but I, uh, none of us are going to live that long. Nobody else in my family is going to live that long. Yeah. So, question. Yes. When everyone in England hits a century, they get a letter from the Queen. You can do really? anything like that over there. Yeah. No, you can, you can, what you can do is you can, like, write into your local television station with a photo and say, it's my 100th birthday, and they'll put you up on TV in the morning news. Cool. Wow. But yeah, no, you, you get a telegram from the Queen. That's so cool. Maybe I can get my grandmother to get a telegraph from the Queen. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> I don't know how long the monarchy's been doing that for, but yeah. Because they have amazing. it on the news. Yeah. Mm. They have a news like someone's like 105 and they're like, it's basically the same card each year, but they still keep them all. Wow. <laughs> that's so, that's so cool. The queen, isn't Why wouldn't she mass produce them? But yeah. I thought that was fairly common knowledge. Hmm. I learned something new today. Yay! Uh, speak, speaking of the Queen in, in England, how are you, Michelle? I'm not too bad, thank you. Um, I want to say I had a really good week this week because I got um, a new fitness boxing game for the week. <clears throat> not, not the week, the Switch. And it's really cool. You just take the Joy-Cons off and you, know, you do the movements. It's, like a, it's a rhythm boxing game. Oh, nice. I want to say I was really good and did it every single day. But I think Thursday I came in and my partner was awake. Because um, it, it's been really hot and Zetra was sleeping. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't want to do it when he's watching me. And he didn't go to sleep for ages. So by the, by the time he finally settled down, I'd sat down. Yeah. And then I think Friday I was chipping around town and doing stuff. And I'm like, so I didn't do the full. I want to say, yeah, I did every single day. I did some exercising, but I, I didn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's still a fun game. And I'll, I'll pick it up again later. And um, I would, I mean, I don't know. Because it's quite high impact. So I'm not sure for like you'd have to judge your own fitness. But if you want a, a game where you sort of you are moving around but not moving around too much, mm -hmm. it's not a bad game, especially you like rhythm rhythm games. Yeah. So I would recommend it. But again, you know, check your own check your own fitness levels. If, whoever's listening, you know, if it's um if it sounds like something you might be interested, in, awesome, but you know, read the warnings. Yeah, what's the name of the game? Um it's just called um, boxing fitness. One second I'll talk <laughs> And somewhere Nintendo is thinking, you know what? We should work on our punch out game for the for the Switch. <laughs> yeah. Um, but work wise, pretty mellow, you know, getting on with it. Mm -hmm. You know, things ticking over nicely. Hmm. So I got my um I got my number uh this week. Uh the guy and myself and the guy I started we started the same day. Cool. And like everyone's got like it's like a quality control number. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's got it and like once you finish your build you stick it on the corner. And yeah, we we got ours. So like, yay, we we belong. <laughs> yay. So I was like, yeah, I got my number twelve. I'm happy about that. Uh, <coughs> so yeah, no badness to report. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been uh, pretty cool. So yeah, in in terms of you know major news in the past couple of weeks, um, America <laughs> is sliding more and more into Nazi fascist Germany, as 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 we as we tried to warn people, but you know they didn't listen because they're idiots. Uh, idiots, racist yep. assholes. P pick your pick mm. the most um, pick pick the most applicable one here. Um, but there was at one point an RAP forty five trending on Twitter, which mm. oh yeah, I remember yeah, sorry. yeah, because because <laughs> it was I want to say it was a football player or or, or some um, some sports uh, player. I think it was LA Angels. Yeah, yeah, baseball. So, 
a baseball player. Okay, <laughs> he had died, and his number yeah. was forty five. And so, of course, R. I. P. Forty five. You know, do honor him and everything. <laughs> but then you have people coming into this and looking at it, and be like, "Oh, that's not about Trump." God damn it! <laughs> I know that was hilarious. I look, I because I saw the original post. I think it might be in your post. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, so what is this about then?" Like someone said, "Oh, if you actually click on it, it's about this baseball player." Yeah. And I did click on the tag, and it was really sweet. Like all the stuff that's like where his mom come out and and didn't throw out and all this stuff. So the tribute stuff looked really cute. Oh yeah. But I can I can totally see why people were like react. I'm not sure necessarily that they should have been like sad that it wasn't, but I can see why they thought it could have. See now, here's the thing that, that 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 does tie into a response that I saw to it. Uh, this mm. person tweeted out, "I try not to get political on here, but our hashtag RIP45 is trending, and people are actually disappointed the president isn't dead. If or said that someone, regardless of who it is, didn't die, shame on you." That yeah. was their, that was their response. Now, here's my response, and and I'm reading this verbatim from my own tweet. Under mm-hmm. other circ- under other circumstances, I might agree with you, but. This, referring to Trump, is a child-killing rapist who brought back literal concentration camps and is likely to get us all killed by either climate change or nuclear war. It's okay to want a monster of a man dead for that. And 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 and, and that's true. I mean, it's like and and I still hold that. Under under most other circumstances, yeah, I would be on board. It's like, yeah, that's kind of douchey, but this is this is the man who is taking us into fascist Nazi Germany here. This is the man who brought back literal concentration camps into our country. This is the man who puts children in there, rips them away from their families, and either kills them through neglect and malnourishment or whatever, or puts them with families that are going to treat them poorly because they're brown. And this is this is also the same man who, as we're finding out, he's, he's a close friend. He's one of those friends of old Jeffrey Epstein who... Oh, what is the word for that I want to use? There are many words I could use for him, but I'm having trouble pinning down just one. Oh, yeah, pedophile rapist. Um, I think those are two words that I could probably apply to Jeffrey Epstein and actually be okay. But, you know, and Trump is associated with him. So is Bill Clinton, and I, and I saw some people bring him up. But like, what about mm. Bill Clinton? Yeah, well, fuck him too. <laughs> you know. We're not going to circle the wagons just because he was a Democrat or because he's more liberal than Trump. You know, you 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 diddle kids. Fuck you. I would say with regards to Clinton, how was he associated? How was he affiliated with Epstein? And then make a judgment based on whether or not, you know, fuck, fuck Clinton or not. But yeah, generally speaking, if you know about it, then that's not good. Yeah. Uh, just goddamn. So you, you, you also – and of course there's also all – again, going to the rapist part of Trump. Mm-hmm. Some of those were not of legal age when when he when he attacked them. So – and yet he's still in the office. You know, that's yeah. what – you know, and – and, uh, uh, Kat, take some of this before I like babble <laughs> into, uh, into incoherency. Right. Um – you know, I'm, uh, there's not a whole lot of people in the world that I say, I just wish they'd drop dead or somebody would take them out or something. But, like, I think we can all agree that this is okay, right? Like, mm-hmm. we can all more or less say that on the whole, I wouldn't kill a man, but if somebody did the world a favor, and I do mean that that would be doing the entire world a favor... <laughs> Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. I don't believe in murder and killing people. I don't believe that any of us have the right to take the the life of another living being. But you know, one can hope (laughs) that you know he just sort of goes away. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be somebody killing him. It doesn't have to be him dying. He could go to prison. He should go to prison. The only reason he's not in prison right now is because he has money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, you know, like, if it would save lives, and it would, can we all agree that that's, that's a, um, a good thing? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, again, I don't want to be a sadistic piece of shit here, but it would literally save lives if something happened to him. Oh, definitely. 
Like, lives of children. People who have yet to experience anything good in the world. Like, people with potential. His potential is already gone. He's yeah. past his prime. He never had a prime. He's <laughs> always a piece of shit. He'll always be a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. He's not capable of doing good in this world. He cannot do good in this world because he's not fundamentally capable of understanding good. Like, so... I'm a little disappointed that he's not dead. <laughs> I mean, that's... I don't think that that's... I mean, like... If if we were all living in during World War Two, and we knew that like there were like actual Nazis, nobody would be like, "Oh, you shouldn't wish Hitler was dead. That's terrible." We all <laughs> agree, Hitler was terrible, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's yes. what we're hurtling towards at breakneck speed every goddamn day of this insufferable presidency. Yes, exactly, yeah. and. To to also add on to that, there's also a thing that went out uh, just this morning as we're recording it. Um, at one point, Stephen Miller claims that the difference between Trump's criticism of the U.S. and the squad, the squad being Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, Ilana Omar, and two other congresswomen of color. I cannot remember their names. I am so ah. sorry. Um, but and, and they call themselves the squad. So And I, I think it's pretty yeah. cool. Anyway, but, but the difference he claims... Miller claims, but the difference between Trump's criticism of the U.S. and the squads is that Trump is upholding the principles of Western civilization, whatever the fuck that means. It's like, so let me let me let me get this straight, because the squad for women of color, they're wrong for criticizing the U.S. And as we have seen Trump trot out there in an attempt to kind of cover up his old deal with jeffrey epstein <clears throat> yeah we ain't forgetting that you orange paste of goo we ain't forgetting that <laughs> we also are not forgetting how you are you're you're not even doing racist dog whistles anymore you are putting on a megaphone and saying yeah these people don't belong because they're brown and and how dare they because we allowed them here that's not his exact words but that's the attitude that is the attitude i am getting from him and everybody like him that oh you're brown you're here on white man sufferance Fuck your white man's sufferance. Fuck you. And I say that being a white man. Fuck <laughs> you. You know, these, especially three quarters of the squad are, are, were born in America. One came here as a refugee and was, get, and was granted citizenship. Before all Melania. four of them, all four <laughs> of them belong in this country. They belong so much in this country that they were elected to Congress. They belong here. Trump doesn't. You know, a, a lot of the people, and I mostly see it on the right, that say, well, if you don't like America, you can leave. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, no. If we, you know, you know, it, it probably, to some people, may not come across as much. But in the terms of my own country, of my home, I, I do have a love and respect for it as it should be, as what I could see it be. It. I guess it's potential, if you will. Mm. And I don't like it. When people are fucking up my home. Because America's yep. my home. These Nazis are fucking up my home. Fuck the Nazis. The Nazis should leave. The white supremacists should get the fuck out. Go to your own island. You know, preferably deserted. You don't need to take any more from any more brown people. We know that's what you want to do. Go to your own mm -hmm. island. Have your white supremacy paradise. Have fun in your homogeny. Okay? You leave. Because guess what? Within a generation or two, if it's not already happening, we white honkies are going to be the minority. We're going to have to <laughs> deal with it. And guess what? The, 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 the brown people and the black people, the, everybody who is not white, are not as cruel and sadistic as our white ancestors and our white leadership, by and large. And I know some asshole's going to be like, well, not all white people. No fucking shit. Duh. No, no fucking shit. <laughs> We know not all white people, but too many white people are pulling this shit. Too many white people are saying that black people should go back where they came from. Too many white people are hem hemming and hawing or outright supporting these concentration camps. Too many white people are killing black people for just walking home with, with a fucking Arizona iced tea and wearing a hoodie. 
or or too many white cops are killing black people for a crime that really all they need to do is pay 50 bucks and they go free. Mm-hmm. Not too many are doing that. So, no, not, not hashtag, hashtag not all white people, but hashtag too goddamn many white people. <sighs> oh... Which awesome. you feel better getting that out of your system? Yeah, there, there is, there is one other thing I do want to bring up, and it is, it is an actual important thing. So you all have seen the um, the the pictures going around, telling you know, warning immigrants about what you can and can't do if ICE comes to your door in in the case of a raid or whatever. You know, you... No, but carry on. Okay, so they tell you, you know, hey, you know, you don't, you know, you don't, they don't. You know, they don't can't legally come in unless they have a warrant signed by a judge, that sort of thing. Let's them know oh, their yeah, rights. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. Well, some chuckle fucks over on 4chan decided, hey, we're going to put out some fake shit and get some of these people deported because we're racist assholes who hate brown people. Uh, so they have their own version. And, it, and the copies I've got in front of me are clearly marked as fake because... Some really good person get, went out there and said, hey, this is actually fake. We're going to put this out, but we're going to put fake all over it so people know. They have things like open your doors and and they're, you know, to a nice agent because if you don't cooperate, you're immediately guilty or answer questions. And if you don't, you're immediately suspect. Do not record police is one of them. And, it's, and, and they try and say recording police is a crime in most U.S. states. Bullshit. No, it is not. If they do not have an expectation of privacy, it is not illegal. And if it's in your own home, your property, fuck you, they're getting recorded. That's that's all the, that is the whole thing. And and here's the thing. The last one on this, they say fight back. As in like oh. you know, go on fisticuffs with them. You know? Oh I mentioned on the previous full episode that ideally I would like to see a whole bunch of motherfuckers just storm all of these places and, and, and physically fight them all or whatever. You know, mm. that's the ideal. But we're not in the ideal. And I know this. And I know that if that if you have 10 ICE agents at your door and you are only like four or five and you're not nearly as well armed as they are, y'all are probably going to die. So unless unless you guys are, are, are you know want to be you know go all kamikaze on them, which hey, hey if you do, that's on that that's your decision. I wouldn't recommend mm -hmm. it, but nope. but unless you want to do that, yeah, just don't. You know, especially since if you do fight back, it gives the people like those racists on 4chan more quote unquote more more well, not even quote unquote more ammunition. To say, oh, these we we we're justified in shooting these people now. We're justified in shooting these the, these brown people now because they shoot shot at us. We we were just trying to do our job. No, if your job involves putting people in concentration camps, fuck you, fuck your job. And the fact that you don't leave means you're either too cowardly or you're enjoying it. And I don't know which is worse at this point. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Uh, so any 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 other thoughts you two have on on this this in particular, but the whole just blah. Uh, speaking so as an outsider, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, speaking as an outsider, when I heard him say, um, "Go back to your crime-ridden countries," I just laughed. So like, uh, yeah. so round the corner. <laughs> uh, I know, like, right? Uh, you're you're in charge of that crime-ridden country. Yeah, so I just—I was just like, "Oh, he—he he really is that fucking stupid, isn't he?" Yeah, and here's the thing: one of the one—one one of the ones he was talking about was Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, AOC. Mm. She yeah, is. Yeah. She, I believe, she is from Queens. You mm -hmm. know, you know. Which, let's see, who else do we know that's from Queens? Uh, somebody <laughs> else who is in politics who is from Queens? Oh yeah, Trump. So he can go fuck himself. Yeah. Uh, the implication is that because they are not white, that they cannot possibly be American, um, which is uh, ridiculous. Like that's that's his line of thinking, and the people who support him have that same line of thinking of go back to where you came from. But like fucking white people go back to where you came from too. Please and thank you. Yeah. Like there were black people and brown people all over this place before. 
white people colonizers came in and no white person gets to tell any person of color to go back where they came from like you don't get to be that level of hypocrite right like also, fuck the fuck off if we're going on the logic of white people of um equals american citizen uh when do i expect my green card uh, there you go <laughs> Uh. I mean, that, that's, that's all it takes is that if you are a white person, that you belong in America. Like, if if for whatever reason, like, I don't know, Sweden got bombed or something and wanted a bunch of refugees to get sent to America, we would have absolutely no problem with that as a country. Mm-hmm. Because that whiteness is is an indicator of character that... That people who are white are automatically good, decent people who are hardworking, blah, blah, blah. And that the brownness and, and darkness of one skin color is an indication of badness of character. I mean, it is literally like, it is black and white is how these people see the world and that if you are not white, then you are not from here and do not belong here. How many times do we hear stories? How many times a week do we hear stories of Native Americans being mm-hmm. told to go back to their country because <laughs> some Sorry. asshole white person can't tell the difference between this brown or that brown? Yeah. They, they just, you know, they see a brown person and they're like, you don't belong here. How fucking mind blowing is that? white people came in destroyed an entire like continent of people over the course of what a couple hundred years yeah Mm. um and and like shoved them away into corners and then have the goddamn fucking audacity to tell the people who they have diminished over the centuries that they don't belong here? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, w- white people have been fucking this country up for so long. Maybe it's time to give it to somebody else. Like, no kidding. Like, I'm <laughs> all for people of color and basically anybody who isn't a white Christian middle-aged man to come in and take the reins, like, seriously. Like, oh, it's just mind-blowing. Like... If you keep making the same mistake over and over and over and over again, eventually you stop doing that thing. And we keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again. And that mistake is having white men in charge of this country. Yeah. Not just, not just white men. Assembly? Rich white men. Rich white men need to not be in charge of this country. Yeah. yeah. So elect me because I'm Pope. <laughs> <laughs> don't elect me. I don't want responsibilities. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, but I think Trump is the definition of that um, word. Like, don't give power to someone who wants it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and and in all honesty, in all honesty, I if if people were to honestly, seriously try and elect me as president, I, I'm I'm old enough. I, I would be flattered, <laughs> but I would also be like, I, I I say yeah, elect me, but not really. No, <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> nah, I, I you know people. I mean, we saw how it, it affected Obama. You know, he went in there all, you know, with the hair dark and everything. He came out with, with like, like basically, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it was very, very great. Yeah. Uh-huh. He looked kind of gaunt. Yeah. Not quite unhealthy, but, like, definitely. And granted, it was, like, eight years. Yeah. Plus a little in the beginning and a little bit afterward. And he still has the stresses of of the presidency and being a consultant and having a say in things like his, his opinion is still important uh, in the grand scheme of it all. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it doesn't really end for him. Um, And all things considered with the position he was put in, he did a pretty fucking good job. Yeah. I mean, I think that is a universal because if you look at Theresa May um, in three years, she's age 10. Um, So yeah, I mean, yes, um, Obama definitely aged a lot, but uh, that's not... No, I mean, yeah, he had a stressful job, but it's not just him. It, it happens to the best. Well, all the middling. Yeah. <laughs> Bush Jr. also went through kind of hell, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, like, I get the feeling that, you know, Trump will not have that problem because he does not do enough work to have that problem. Mm. Yeah. He, he, he 
I mean, like, he's going to go home and, and shit in a gold-plated uh, toilet. What, what real worries does he have? He can just come in, fuck the planet up, the whole planet. It's not just us. There yep. are repercussions outside of our country to what he does. And that he's just going to come in, fuck the whole planet up, leave, blame all problems on other people, and then sleep perfectly well at night because he will never have had a single responsibility the whole time. Yeah. You know, never mind the fact that the Arctic is on fire. <laughs> uh. was, I can't remember the um the name of the guy now. It's um, one of your chat show hosts, and he does um like an in-focus thing. Mm-hmm. And he <clears throat> was playing a clip. Um, and it was like, and the world are laughing at us, they're laughing at our, our president. I'm like, well, that clip didn't age well, did it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let, let's, let's move on from the politics to something that is it, it, still heartbreaking, but I, I feel it necessary and proper to bring up, considering at least two-thirds of us, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, Michelle, how into anime are you? Like, do you, do you watch I'm, I'm, any of it? or? I'm, I'm aware of it. Um, I never really got massively into it, but those are the odd ones that I, I'm aware of and know. Okay. So, and Kat, I know you do the anime news on uh, Nerd to the Third. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I'm our anime expert. Yes. <laughs> and so, and so uh, this week, uh, one of the one of the big anime anime studios over in Japan, uh, Kyoto, Kyoto Animation, <laughs> got torched. To, to yeah, put I it saw bluntly. that. Yeah. I saw that. That was hard because like, didn't thirty people die? Thirty-four. Or something like that. Oh. Thirty-four yeah, as of this I mean, recording. As someone who's not massively a um, anime fan but is a human, mm-hmm. that that shit affected me too. Yeah, and and Kat, you probably know a little bit more about the company than I do, but uh, so feel free, please correct me if I'm wrong on any of it. Uh, from what I understand, they employed a lot of women. Yes, uh, that was kind of one of the things they were known for. Um, the anime industry is a very difficult one to be in, period. Um, you you are chronically overworked and underpaid, but uh, KyoAni was particularly um, noted to being kind to, to their staff um, and uh, did hire a lot of women, and so a lot of women died. Oof. Mm-hmm. Oof. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, um, but yeah, it, it, the whole thing was really incredibly tragic. Um, for those who don't really know too much about it, uh, and a guy came to the building, just started throwing gasoline over it, torched it. Um, it went very quickly. Um, a lot of the people who died inside died of uh, like CO two poisoning. Mm-hmm. Oof. Um, and inhalation and stuff. So, <laughs> you know, people really suffered in this yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was pretty brutal. Um, and they, uh, and I, I was really looking at a lot of the, the video footage and the photos and stuff because it was a multi story building. Um, so some people were obviously able to get out. There was, I think they said about uh, 70, just over 70 people in the building that day. Yeah. Um, so the fact that that not everybody died and people did get out is really good, but uh, I my guess is that a lot of the people who died were on the second floor because I was looking at it and like there weren't an abundance of windows or anything like that. Mm. Um in addition to the loss of life, which is obviously incredibly tragic, um, it destroyed, like, all of the company's stuff. Yeah. Uh, because that was their headquarters. They did have, like, smaller operations in other places, but this was where most of the animators and most of the non-animation staff were. And so everything that they've worked on is gone. Yeah. And it's just... <laughs> God damn. And... and, and... As far as I know, they the the they've got the, they've got the suspect, and they haven't released any motive yet. 
as far as I'm no, aware. Well, an, an official motive I don't think has been released, um, mostly because the 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 arsonist, the suspect, uh, was actually injured in the fire himself. Yeah. Uh, because he probably, my guess would be, he ended up getting some of the uh, gasoline or whatever he was using. Yeah. I my bet is that he got some on himself and then lit himself on fire because he definitely had burns, and he was taken into the hospital. And I think he, they actually put him under mm-hmm. um, and were keeping him unconscious for a couple of days until he got, like, he healed up enough uh, because he was in a lot of pain. Oof. Um, um, yeah. Could have happened to a nicer guy. Yeah. But um, uh, some of the, the local people, the like the neighbors and stuff, because this was a building and it's not like a building that was just surrounded by other you know, like businesses. It was actually like in a neighborhood. Yeah. So some mm-hmm. of the people who lived in the neighborhood heard him screaming, die. Um, but one of them, one of the neighbors claims uh, they heard him saying something along the lines to indicate that Kyoto Animation had like stolen a property of his. Like he had like written a novel and they stole it or something like that. And that was something he was screaming. Wow. Um, they won't be able to verify all of this until the like the police investigation is obviously ongoing throughout all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just what a neighbor reported. Who knows if that you know? I haven't heard multiple accounts of that, but this guy, when they dug into his record, they had seen that he had uh, another. Uh, he had had an arrest like three a couple years prior, and he had served three years in prison. And he, like, had multiple, like, check-ins with the police for just... He, it seemed like he was a very unstable person. Yeah. Just, god damn. Mm. It's, it's, it's very tragic. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. It's just, I, I've lost words for how awful this is. Um, mm. uh, because it is one of the... Uh, there's some people who are going around saying it's the greatest mass murder in, in Japanese history uh, post-war or yeah. something like that. I don't think that's quite true. I think there was another incident that had like one or two more deaths to it. But it is certainly um, mm. one of the most notable because um, the, the sheer loss of life is obviously astounding. Um, the loss of the work is going to have a huge effect because Kyoani didn't just like make their own shows they were a company that other companies went to to do work on their shows as well yeah so like already there's a couple of things that have been had to like oh well this show this brand new show that just came out that isn't from Kyoani is on a definite hold because mm. Kyoani was working on I don't know like in betweens or something right um, uh, as far as I know, there is, um, I don't think there's an official list of everyone who's dead yet because yeah. there were several people who were still missing Ooh. and, and I don't know if that was like, Hey, this person wasn't in the office that day and they just haven't responded to anybody's phone calls. So we don't mm. know if they were one of the, and, and like, because that many people died, that is like weeks worth of autopsies, <laughs> of which they had they've already started all like autopsies and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so it's gonna be a little while longer, I think. And and like they had already reported thirty three people dead, and then one more person died in the hospital. So then it became thirty four. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Um, so it's gonna. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe one or two more people died. Yeah, um, uh, but there was a lot of of oh, like oh this person died and we're like no that's not confirmed please stop saying mm. that until the police do um, because there was a particularly well known director who people were saying oh this person died and it was really that person was missing um, and then I think was later confirmed to still be alive uh, maybe so yeah there's, uh, it, it, there's a lot that's not known right now and but there will almost certainly be long-term fallout. Oh, yeah. But in the meantime, um, there's some good information out there if you want to help. Uh, there's, um, I think Crunchyroll has a, a good post if you're, um, somebody has a good post up about what you can do to help 
if you are interested mm. in supporting the victims. Um, Sentai Filmworks has a GoFundMe set up. They're still in the process of um, figuring out how they're going to get Kill any of the money um, mm. because it is an, like an international thing. Um, but Sentai is like their primary distributor mm-hmm. uh, for America, so it's pretty good chance that it will actually go through correctly and that the funds won't be misused. Um, and they have raised over, I think, a million dollars. Whoa! They've already raised over a million dollars. I was looking at it this morning. Um, almost two million. Oh, hold on. Let me refresh the page. I still had this pulled up. Yeah. Yes, they've raised one million eight hundred sixty thousand dollars. Damn. Nice. I know. It's really good. <laughs> it's good because anime fans tend not to be very rich. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's great. Um, but there's other things that you can do. Um, you know, people are saying just stream some of their stuff because they they get like trickle down revenue yeah. um, for legal streaming, not illegal streaming. Illegal streaming mm. does fuck all for any part of the industry. Yeah. Um, and but you can also go to uh, the Kill Any website, and there's several uh, people who uh, there's like um, articles describing how to do it. But if you go to Kill Any's website, what you can do to give them immediate money. Um, is they have some digital downloads that you can buy that's huh. just like digital wallpapers and stuff. Um, so it, it, it is not taxing on them at all. So they don't have to ship you anything or, or do anything and anybody from anywhere can do it. So you can get one of their digital downloads and buy those and that gives them money. Yeah. And, um, and you mentioned you mentioned the uh, streaming on, on the legal sites like Crunchyroll, for example. Do that uh, block um, off. Uh, that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, that yeah. should be, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it should go without saying, but you know, mm. yeah, yeah. Um, and then just like sharing some of your favorite titles and talking about what their shows mean to you, nice stuff like that. Yeah, you don't have to spend money if you don't want to, but if you can, it's good. Um, I think uh, Crunchyroll is also taking. Um, they're they're taking fan messages and they're going to translate them all and turn them over, mm-hmm. which will be nice. Yeah. Uh. Sorry, I'm very emotional talking about. No, it's okay. It's I, was, okay. I was about to ask. Are you all right, hon? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I get I get I get really teary very easily. So yeah. just like I've been super upset about this for days, and I wasn't expecting to talk about it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. I, yeah, I, I, I cry over everything. If you don't know me, you should know that I cry over literally everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. <sighs> I feel. It's, uh. it's fine. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. Go ahead. So um, to kind of give a little bit of a whiplash before we go to our break. Yeah, it's been that long. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, uh. I've got this. There's this. There's this one thing that's made the rounds again on the social media. I don't remember if we've covered it on the show before. But it's this post that was made back in September um, by, a, by presumably a lady who is really pissed off about childless couples at Disney World. Ugh. And I, I, I just got to do a dramatic reading because she is just <laughs> fucking insane. Um, so, I, again, I don't remember if we've done it before, but if not, but if we have, well, um, an encore. Mm. <laughs> Because it is making the rounds on social media again. Um, So, here we go. It pisses me off to no end when I see childless couples without at Disney World. By the way, that is literally childless couples without at Disney World. I did not forget a word, (laughs) but she did. Disney World is a family amusement park. Yet these immature millennials throw away their money on useless crap. They have no idea the joy and happiness it is to mothers who buys their babies treats and toys. They will never experience the exhaustion that is to chase a three-year-old around and getting stares at assuming I'm a bad mother. Commas. Oh my god, a fucking comma, please. Ah. This cunt, in some very slutty shorts, was buying a Mickey pretzel and Aiden, I'm assuming her son, wanted one, but the line was very long, so I said later, and it broke his poor old widow heart, and he cried, I wanted to take that fucking pretzel from that tramp, like, thanks bitch, you made my son cry. Disney World is for children. But it, it, it's family amusement park. Uh, people without children need to be 
land. Who's gonna run your Who's gonna run your park then? <laughs> Mothers with children should be allowed to skip all the line. You have no fucking idea what it is like to have to stand in line for three hours with a cranky, tired, exhausted toddler, and I can't just tell him we can't do something because it's his vacation too. I fucking hate childless women with a burning passion. End of scene. Awesome, awesome. Just I, I am. I'm so happy to be hated by this woman. Seriously, <laughs> like wow. The the the. <laughs> I'm I'm going to assume caucasity of this bitch. <laughs> just, just, oh my god! Like, okay, you, that that lady who bought the pretzel did not disappoint little Johnny. You disappointed little Johnny by saying I'm not queuing up to get you a pretzel. Yeah. Because and also, what? What? Especially if they're talking millennials, maybe they're waiting to start a family. Yeah. Or, or maybe they, maybe they do have a child, but it's too small to be seen yet. It, it, it could be a zygote. Yeah. It could be like just. Uh, if so, fucking what? Yeah, newly. Or maybe the children... Disney World. Oh. Yeah, well... I think there was. Oh uh, hmm? uh, yeah, there was a celebrity couple. Well, this is years back, and. Not only did they decide to spend, I think they had a two week honeymoon, mm -hmm. they spent a week of it, it. I think it was Disney World or it could have been um, land, but they, they went to Disney for their honeymoon mm -hmm. for the first week and took some members of their family with them because yeah. that's what they wanted to do. There you go. I mean, and, and families and the... is not just the oh, mother, father, child. Or mother, mother, mm. child, or father, father, child, or whatever. Is the yeah. children don't necessarily have to be involved, or at least small ones don't. Mm. Just I think the second week was like their romantic week. Yeah, the, the, the week one they took the family to Disney. Yeah, I mean it's like the three of us could go, and we, we'd be mm. fine, you know. We're family. Yeah, there you go. You know, we <laughs> could go. We do the thing. You know, <sighs> Becky could go with, and 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 we could like scandalize some people. I don't know. I would say we, we could invite Aaron, but he's a father, so it wouldn't be the same impact. I mean, I'd love to invite Aaron, but to make the protest, you, you can't have a parent. Ah, invite him anyway, shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he can, show us all the, he can show us all the secret places. <laughs> <laughs> well, not just him. I mean, I used to work at Disney World, too, so. Oh, did you? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah a long damn time ago. Uh, but It's actually mandatory for every person who lives oh, in the state of Florida. Sorry? It's actually mandatory that every person who's in their like early twenties to work at Disney World. It's like mandatory in the state of Florida. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this this lady just wow. And, actually, and what um, is your definition of slutty shorts? I wonder, because oh, we wait. like short shorts. I mean, it's like are are they nearly showing her ass? Or are they just halfway up her thigh? Or are they just showing her knees? Oh, uh. oh no, they're showing some ankle. <laughs> oh my god. Scandalous. Oh, <laughs> uh. uh, but yeah, so so yeah. I, I, I think I think something I think we all can agree on. Disney World it, it's meant for everybody. Mm. And by everybody they mean everybody that can afford it. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah. but it is meant That's for not many everybody. Now, but... Yeah, but it is meant for everybody, and even and they even have places you can go that have the Disney spirit that you don't have to pay to get to, like Disney Springs. <laughs> there, there are there are ways for everybody to enjoy it, and to tell somebody that they can't because they don't have a child, that that is rude at best, and <laughs> really fucking word I can't even think of at at worst. Uh it it's really insane. It's, yeah. It's like the I opposite don't... of feminism. What is it when you when you shame people who don't have children because you're so ingrained in like the only way to be an adult woman is to be a mother? Yeah. Like Biblical so Mormonism. Backwards. <laughs> it's anti feminist. Um <sighs> And then it's also slut shaming and youth shaming and so many other things. It's, 
It's like the only the only purpose that you serve is to be a mother, and if you're not a mother, then you're a waste of fucking oxygen. Like, Ugh. I'm really tired of like Western cultures, all cultures, treating mm. women like their only function is to have to be a baby factory. It's real obnoxious. Yeah. I think but, like we are not the Tlaylocks. Thank you. I think I've mentioned this before that I would have won. You know, I mean, I haven't had a child, but I would. You know, if it happened, then I'd be happy about that because I do kind of want a want a baby. But so yeah, technically I'm now childless, but I'm not as childless by choice. But that's just the situation I'm in. Yeah, that's just so, how life so, worked out for you. And there are probably loads of women like me, either who have actively tried and for one reason or another cannot, or I've, I've been like, yeah, if it happens, great, cool, and I'm not going to worry about it. But um, you know. It hasn't happened for, for whatever reason. So that okay, that is the thing that I mean. Outside of her attitude and, and slut shaming and calling calling her names and that, because like I'm sorry, you already lost me when you were protesting. You lost me harder when you started slut shaming it and calling this young lady a cunt. You, that's where you completely lost any argument you had. Oh yeah. But beyond that, for whatever reason, a woman. Of, of you know a, a childbearing uh, person doesn't have a child, be it by choice. If it's by choice, that's one thing. But if it's because they, even if they, if they actively want a child and have not had that happen for them yet, fuck you, lady. You don't know their stories. Exactly. There's there's also this this implication that. Like, we all know that mothers work very hard. Mothers are greatly underappreciated. But there's also, like, this mother worship that, like, that has kind of come around in the last couple of years that kind of glorifies the suffering of mothers to Mm. say that, like, oh, because I've seen posts before that say, like, mothers uh, should get to skip lines anywhere they want. To, and it's sort of indicating that, that their stress and their suffering is greater than any other in the world. Like, that that being a mother is so hard that they should get to do whatever the fuck they want or have more privileges than other people because they're under so much pressure and get so little sleep and all of that. And, like, I don't think anybody's going to argue that being a mom is really hard. But to say that other people are, you know, don't suffer as much or don't have it as hard is also really fucking false. Yeah. Because as we've said, you don't know what other people are going through. Yeah. Like, you know, being a mom is hard, but it's also, a lot of the time, it's a fucking choice. It's not always a choice, but, Mm. like, it's also something that you committed to doing, and it is really goddamn hard and really goddamn underappreciated. But so are other things that other people are going through. And again, I don't want to diminish how much mothers do, you know, for no money or, or anything. But other people in this, like, world are capable of having a hard time. Um, and just because somebody is out at, at Disneyland or Disney World or whichever one this is doesn't mean that they're also not having a hard time with their lives. There are, are invisible disabilities. There are, are people with chronic illnesses. Um, there's all kinds of things like death in the family is a thing like that girl's like dad could have died three weeks ago and she's going on this vacation to make herself feel like things yeah. are normal yeah. you don't fucking know we don't know we try to judge people based on their fucking booty shorts or whatever but we don't know what's going on in people and to just assume that because this person is not currently showing themselves to have a child at their side means that you are better than them, that you are a more fulfilled person, and that you are tireder and suffered more, that's absolutely oh. ridiculous. It is. Well, and thus we mock wanna, <laughs> Yeah. Just to, just to lighten the mood back up a little bit, um, I did have an idea. Like, um, There is sketch comedy potential here. Oh, because... Yeah. Mothers should um, be be able to cut into the front of the line. You know that mothers should cut the queue. Okay, let's have a queue of mothers. That, oh that's no, a you have another right queue. There. Oh shit! That's a sketch right there. Like, oh, I'm a mother. I have to cut the front of the queue. Okay, I'm a mother. I'm going to cut the front. And you just have this whole centipede of mothers trying to cut the front of the queue, and nobody gets to the front. Yeah. Meanwhile, all the single people are going right on through. I think there's I think there's a sketch there. I, I really think there's a sketch there. Yeah. There we go. 
so with that we're gonna go ahead and take our break i know i know well wow this this yeah it's already a longer show <laughs> but we've also got two weeks worth to talk about and still at least one other thing i want to bring up bef- even outside of the news articles i've got for this week so uh we'll go ahead and take our break listen to some ads and, and other things and uh we'll be back hey folks we'll get back to the show in a moment but first i want to tell you about patreon uh, Patreon is what I use to get around all of the YouTube ad- adpocalypse bullshit, and while I don't have a lot right now, every little bit does help, and if you like what you hear or what you see on any of my videos or podcasts, head on over there for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all of these things early before anybody else does, and you can get them completely ad-free. Yeah, I know YouTube right now is technically ad-free, but... At some point, I'm probably going to get big enough to where ads will start coming in. And those can be annoying, so you want to avoid that, right? If you go ahead and go now over to patreon.com slash gomer 21 double x leave a dollar, five dollars, doesn't matter how much, you can get all of these, again, you can get them early, and you get them without ads. Even when I reach the point on YouTube to where ads can be put on these videos. So, it's a win-win. And you can even avoid the ads that go up on the Anchor versions that go out to all of the other websites that are out there. No ads. It's great. Uh, so that's patreon.com slash gomer 21 double x Howdy, folks. Uh, <laughs> it's been been a hell of a time with, you know, extra long show. I, I do apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, two weeks worth of stuff. We've been getting longer. Recently, I guess we're just letting ourselves just go a little bit more and just letting things go as they may. Um, uh, who knows? Maybe I maybe I should tighten it up a little bit. But uh, but yeah, uh, with this this particular week's uh, segment here, I kind of want to do something a little different. I've pretty much ranted everything out in the first half, you know, in all the show this week. But there's something I want to do. Now lately, I, I I've mentioned it on the show before. I've been watching and reading JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And right before I went to record this, I was eating, and as I do, I look at TV tropes. So I was looking through the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure TV tropes pages, and I want to see, uh, I want to, I want to try and get some of you guys to guess, especially if you're JoJo fans. If you're not, then well, I'll I'll f- find a different one next week. But so I am on the, I am on the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure characters page for a certain somebody. Um, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but I will read off uh, one or two, depending on the length, um, TV tropes that are associated with them. And you guys write in. Uh, you can either at me on – actually, at the show on Twitter, uh, Thess Talk Show. Don't at me personally. Um, you know, I mean, I may still read it, but it's also Twitter. <laughs> so at the show Twitter, at Thess Talk Show, or the Twitter, uh, or the Twitter post for this episode – and just uh, use the hashtag TV Tropes Guess. I, I guess that'll be it. And the, oh, that's what we'll use this time. Uh, I'll probably come up with something a little bit better later on. This is literally off the top of my head. So I'm gonna I'm going to look at this page, like I said, and I'm gonna try and give something that is not. Um, I think I might. I think I might have one. Something that I'm gonna hope. I hope is not too. That gives it away too easily, but also something that you know helps you guess a little bit. Something not too easy, but not too, not too uh, hard here. So, so for this one, um, uh, let us go with um. I had one. Where did it go? Okay. <clears throat> We'll go with the establishing character moment. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we're going to go with an establishing character moment. If I read the whole thing, it'd probably give it too much away, and even then, it, it might still be a little bit much. But that's okay. Um, so here, here is this one. His first character moment that shows his honor before reason comes when he vehemently apologizes to Jotaro for how his presence in the Joestar family tree and the affair that caused it has thrown the family into disarray, and he refutes Jotaro's offer of one-third of Joseph's inheritance money on the grounds that he and his mom are doing just fine without it. Uh, It's probably an easy one for for most JoJo fans. If not, that's okay. 
But that is read exactly from the TV Tropes page. That should be enough for everything. If And if not, I'll give the answer next week. <laughs> a little bit of audience interaction. I, I kind of I kinda like that thing. So again, go follow Thess Talk Show on Twitter. Um, go to the Twitter post for this episode. Leave a reply there. And use the hashtag TV Tropes Guess. That way I can just look at the thing and, and it's easier to organize. Uh, basically is what I'm getting at. So yeah, um, send them in, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know uh, next week. And if there's any silly answers, I'll read those too. <laughs> All right, talk to y'all next week. Back to the show. And we are back from our break. Calm down a little bit there. Uh, but before we get to our news, I've got one other thing I want to do a dramatic reading of. And again, this is this is another one that. The entry itself, you know, it, it's from a blog post in uh, 2012 uh, by a guy named Patrick Rothfuss. I had no idea who the fuck this guy was until recently, but this has been making the rounds because apparently, you know, people are shitting all over movie adaptations and everything. And of course, we have re-releases and re-adaptations of classic Disney movies coming out, Aladdin, The Lion King, etc. And of course, people are going to be feeling some kind of way about it. Well, this guy back in 2012, he wrote about when the uh, when the Hobbit movies were just getting into production and being released and everything, and talking about all of that. Um, but that's not the the gist of it. It's the comparison he makes, um, which which gets to it. And and what I've got in front of me is pretty much the second half of the post. Um, but if you want to find out for yourself, I want to read the whole post. Uh, go to patrickrothfuss.com. Look for the entry called Concerning Hobbits, Love, and Movie Adaptations. Um, but, yeah, again, and again, it's from 2012, but it is just now gaining a little bit more light on it. So it's new to us. Um, so here we go. <clears throat> I can tell in my bones that the movie is going to be chock full of scenes that would never end the original story. I'm not talking about a little extra dialogue here and there. I'm talking about completely invented cutaway scenes that stuff more action in and subplots that were only barely alluded to in the book. My off-the-cuff prediction? At least 20 minutes worth. Well, I mean, he's talking about the Hobbit movies, so they managed to pull three movies out of that one, if I remember right. So, yeah. he's not wrong? Uh, yeah. But that's that's not the that's not the worst part. It will be a good movie, maybe even a great movie, but it will also be, at best, a moderately okay adaptation of the subtle, sweet book I grew up loving. Again, okay. So not- okay, you have to stop. Patrick Rothfuss is from Wisconsin. Oh my god, I did not know that! <laughs> Why are you doing this accent for the love of God? He's from Wisconsin! I didn't know this. I did not know this. Oh my uh. god. Please continue with an American accent. Okay, I could do that. <laughs> he has a, he's like, he's got like a really cheap, like really like a chill, deep voice. He's like a normal guy. He's not crazy. Okay, <laughs> okay. Crazy. okay. Are, you, are you sure? I mean, based on what, I, based on what I'm seeing here, we'll, we'll have to question some of it. But then again. He's an author. He's always going to be a little weird. This is true. Um, okay, so, all right. Normal, normal accent now. You know what it's going to be like. It's going to be like wandering onto an internet porn site and seeing a video of a girl that I had a crush on in high school. You probably knew someone like her. The smart girl. The shy girl. The one who wore glasses and was a little socially awkward. The one who screwed up the curve in chemistry so you got an A- minus instead of an A. Why are we going to porn? I mean... Okay. She was a geek girl before anyone knew, anybody knew what a geek girl was. And that was kind of awesome because you were a geek boy before being a geek was culturally acceptable. How old is this man? <laughs> 46. 46. So he's got 10 years on me. Okay. So he grew up like in the 70s and the 80s. Basically. Yeah. All right. You liked her because she was funny and she was smart and you could actually talk to her. And she read books as if girls in the 70s and 80s didn't read books. What? I mean, mm-hmm. it's like. Okay, and sure, she was girl-shaped, and that was cool. Okay, what? <laughs> girl-shaped? The fuck? I mean, it's, she's a teenage girl. You can say that, dude. Because that's who you're describing. 
Maybe you should actually just, like, read the whole thing instead of nitpicking, like, every six words. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some of these things are, are just Because I'm not me. following it anymore. You lost me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I, I will try to go at least a couple of paragraphs. Okay, okay. It's just, this is mind-boggling to me. Okay. And she was cute in an understated, freckly way. And sometimes you'd stare at her breasts when you were supposed to be paying attention in biology. But you were 16. You stared at everyone's breasts back then. And yeah, you had some fantasies about her because, again, you were 16. But they were fairly modest fantasies about making out in the back of a car. Maybe you'd get to second base. Maybe you could steal third if you were lucky. And maybe, just maybe, something delightful and terrifying might happen. And yeah, it would be it would probably be awkward and fumbling at times, but that's okay because she'd be doing half the fumbling too. Because the only experience either one of you had was from books. And afterwards, if you make a Star Wars joke, you know she'll get it. And she'll laugh. That's the girl you fell in love with in high school. You didn't have a crush on her because she was some simmering pool of molten sex. You loved her because she was a subtle and sweet and smart and special. So you stroll onto this porn site and there she is. Except now she's wearing a thong and a black leather halter top. She's wearing fuck me red lipstick with a lot of dark eye makeup. Her press are amazing now. Round and perfectly proud and perfectly round. Okay, breathe. Breathe. And, and that's not because he's writing anything wrong. He's actually technically writing okay. I just need to take a moment. Mm -hmm. Someone's taught her to dance and she does it well. She's flexible and tan and she has a flat midriff and walks like a high class Vegas stripper. Her eyes are dark and smoldering. She has a riding crop. <laughs> she likes to be tied up. Her two red mouth forms a perfect circle as she sighs and moans and tosses her head into a performance designed to win any number of Academy Awards. God damn, dude. We get it. You're comparing it to porn. <laughs> uh, and what's the problem with this? Well, in some ways, nothing. What you found is perfectly good porn, maybe even great porn. But in other ways, the problem is blindingly obvious. The girl has nothing in common with your high school crush except for her social security number. Everything you loved about her is gone. Okay, I am actually going to take a moment right here and, and say, no, bullshit. You know, because to me, the way it reads to me is that this high school sweetheart, may, he may or may not have, this may, not, may or may not be based on an actual person. It's coming across mm -hmm. to me like, oh, she was this in high school, but now she does porn. Therefore, everything that she was in high school is no longer. Just because she's doing porn doesn't mean she still can't be the intelligent, geeky, well-read girl you fell in love with in high school. That, you know, they are not mutually exclusive. Huh. And, all, and, the, and your only comparison is seeing her on a porn site. Ugh. Sorry, that just really bothered mm -hmm. me. That bothered me. Okay. We love the sweet, shy, freckly girl. We still remember her name, and after all these years, she lives close to our heart. Seeing her in lipstick and stiletto heels dancing on a pole is like watching... <laughs> this comparison... Oh, no. This comparison. It's like watching Winnie the Pooh do heroin and then glass someone in a bar fight. <laughs> I'll be honest. I kind of want to see Winnie the Pooh glass someone in a bar fight. <laughs> oh, but I'm that's just me. Uh it isn't just something that I look forward to seeing. And that's how I'm going to feel when I watch The Hobbit. Remember, this is what we're talking about. I, 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 okay, okay, okay. Two, two more paragraphs. I gotta finish. One, I'll be one part entertained, two parts nostalgic, two parts irritated, three parts outraged, and one part oddly titillated. And I'll watch it, and I'll enjoy it, and afterwards I'll go home and feel more than slightly sad. End of article. End of, end of post. And bear in mind, it, it is half- it is it is the second half of this blog post, which again, if you want, if you really want to go and read the whole thing, Patrick Rothfuss blog .patrick .com, Look for concerning hobbits, love, and movie adaptations. Just, uh, I, I, it's like okay, you want to talk about how adaptations will, you know, they adapt, so they add things, um, like. Like with the anime adaptation of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yes, I'm making a JoJo reference because it actually fits in here. You know, they've taken yeah. scenes that were in the manga and extrapolated on them a little bit. You know, like in, in the most recent season, they had a main character get killed off. And while it is a lot quicker in the manga, in the anime, they, they do like this whole send-off thing. And even one of the characters that had been written out at that point 
got a small scene where he looks up and sees the character's uh, metaphorical soul go by. That didn't happen in the manga. So you have things like that happening. That happens all the time. How do you get from that to my blood runs cold, my memory has just been sold? <laughs> How do you get to that? Like, oh my god. Ah. Uh, just, oh god. A am I, Cat, Cat, am I being unfair to him? I think you are taking his post in a completely different way than I am. I don't honestly see any problem with this assessment. Oh. This assessment to me reads as here is okay it's it's first off it's making a comparison that most people can relate to okay fantasizing about somebody that you fancy that's mm -hmm. a very simple thing okay okay so what i'm seeing is here you know here's the this is the story of a guy um who you know the story is you are a person there's a girl that you fancy you have foisted your thoughts and your expectations and your perception of this person and that is the memory that you have and that is what you like how you will always see this person and then this person grows up to be a porn star and that has shattered your image of that person because the only thing that you truly valued was your vision of that person okay so he's not saying that being a porn star is bad or that doing porn is bad what he's saying is that like what you value is like what you're going to see as good and then anything other than what you you know your your interpretation of something is is uh, devalues something okay that's how i read it i think he did actually a pretty good job yeah. Uh, because this is not a poor assessment of the Hobbit films by any means. <laughs> it's something that we loved that we have these these um these wonderful memories of reading when we were kids or whenever you read them. And then you go to the movies and you're like, well, this isn't how I remember them. Therefore, it is bad. That's just how fandoms treat all the adaptations. Yeah. Um, I can see that. Uh. Yeah, I honestly do not see the problem with this assessment <laughs> at all. Uh, that that's that's fair, and and you know honestly it's it's oh. one of, it's kind of refreshing to have something that we kind of more disagree more on because <laughs> it's almost <laughs> like almost like a lot of things you know and 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 I and of course I have to listen back while I'm editing and everything so it's like there are a lot of things that we agree on a lot which you know that's fine that's great and dandy it makes us all good friends but every now and then you need to you know, it, it mm. basically goes to show that we don't always agree on everything. So mm. in, ca in case there's anybody that's like, are oh, you all agree on everything? No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> my, my overriding thought is, is the porn lady he's watching a switch because he describes her as having a crop and liking being tied up. I guess. <laughs> I, I wasn't even, <laughs> I wasn't even curious about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And there's nothing wrong with being a switch. Oh, of course not. I just like, I just like, hang on, a crop and they, they don't normally, you know, unless they're separate scenes. Oh. But... I, 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 I mean, my my thought is he wasn't entirely wrong. Um, he he kind of had a point. Yeah. Um, I think it's a weird analogy. I mean, I'm taking on board what Cat is saying. Right. And like, you know, um, if you're taking it, strip it right down to saying, this is my memory of this thing and it's in a perfect bubble that can't be broken because it's a perfect bubble. Oh no, here's a thing that's changed the thing I love in my bubble and now my bubble's got a bruise on it. Yeah, okay, um, that happens. I mean, as a fan of Harry Potter, like, especially book four, mm -hmm. that film really did. I don't know if we've discussed this before, but. Book Harry is way more competent than movie Harry. Hmm. Movie Harry looks like he's kind of just fumbling through it. Yeah. But Book Harry is a much better wizard. He knows a lot more things. Hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, adaptation-wise, they're not bad adaptations. And I, you could make the arguments for um, having let the series, the book series finish before making the movies. Yeah. Um, But... Because there, there are things that became important later on. Right. 
but yeah, so I never read The Hobbit as a kid, so I don't know if I have that thing. And obviously, you know, the Harry Potter thing. I'm just trying to think of an adaptation. Um, I, I I know that I don't think I know one that has enough distance between my original reading of it and and the production. Yeah. But yeah, your your memory could become tainted. But I still think maybe going to that full description of the um the porn actress is like you you you. Your analogy has a point, but you're kind of stretching it. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so... Yeah, at, at the end, I guess, I guess something we all could agree on is, yeah, the, the, the Hobbit, the a- adaptations in general, they can, I guess they can look back, help affect mm. your, I guess, memory of things you grew up with. And mm. honestly, I would have went with a different thing because... Yeah. Yeah, because at least to me, it came off a lot more. Uh, I, I want to say slut shamey than it that maybe he intended, mm-hmm. but and and mm-hmm. that's how I read it. So, but but it, as as, as you can see, we we not read different slut shaming. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The thing is, is that he's not slut shaming. Yeah. this is like a very common thing in society. Like literally Angel is the centerfold is like a whole Mm. thing that we all know because there's a song about it. Yeah. But like, (laughs) he's not really saying that this is a bad thing. He's like, this is, I think it's more of anything as kind of a commentary on men in general Mm -hmm. um, to say that this is something that people on the whole can understand. Yeah. Like, I think it's kind of shitty that, that, this is an analogy that we can even make because mm-hmm. you shouldn't be slut shaming people. Yeah. yeah. But it's, I don't think it's like an anomaly by any means. This isn't him going prostitution is bad or, or, or porn is bad or something like that. It's him making something that people, other people can identify with because it's that fucking common to, mm. to like demand porn, but simultaneously look down on porn stars. Mm. Yeah, that's like how fucked up our culture is in general. I could see mm. that, but then again, I also I'm also the kind of guy that if I saw somebody that I had a crush on in high school suddenly doing porn, I'd be like, oh hey, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's also me. That's just me. And I, and my my experience is not universal. I realize that. Mm. Uh. I'm not sure how I feel if I saw someone from school doing. I mean, I I and this is not even a perfect analogy, but I. Someone I knew from primary school, so like pre eleven. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't see them again until I was working at the nightclub, and they like, oh hey, it's me from school. Like, oh, I can't serve you. You're just a child, you know, just because that was my memory. <laughs> and we laughed uh, it off when I gave him a drink. It's like you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just I don't know. Yeah. I think I think in a lot of this kind of yeah. It's it's stuff that we can we can suss out a little later, yeah. I guess. At least in my case, I could suss out a little later. Probably have another look at it, but um, yeah, maybe at least look up Patrick Rothfuss before <laughs> you shit talk on him. <laughs> Lesson <laughs> learned. Because he's from Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over that. He's a really well known author. I have a book of his on my shelf that I haven't read yet. I, I... what was he? What's he, he written? Because he plays I'm... Dungeons and Dragons a lot, so automatically I'm like, gotta come to his defense. He's a D and D. Okay then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is one of those times. Oh, oh, what is? Oh, my foot tastes horrible. You realize that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I am not afraid of admitting that on this show. I'm not afraid of that. <laughs> uh, but now we'll we'll go ahead and hit a, cu- hit a quick couple of uh, news articles um, that I that I really 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 want to cover. Um, hmm. one of them, one of them's a little, one of them's a little bit more, um, uh, serious, but there's a couple that are, that I'm going to round out the show on that are a little, a little more silly. Um, first one is out of Pennsylvania, a Pennsylvania school district that threatened to have children placed in foster care over their parents' unpaid lunch tabs is now facing criticism for going overboard. No shit. You think? The Wyoming Valley West School District sent letters last week to around 40 40 parents saying the district was owed around $22,476 in lunch money, warning that unless they paid their children, 
Unless they paid, their children could be taken from your home and placed in foster care, according to Joseph Muth, director of the district's federal programs. In an interview with ABC Free News on Friday, Muth called the letter a mistake. The letter was over the top and should not have been sent out, he said. Duh! Though he suggested the district would look at other ways of getting repaid. He declined to say how the letter was approved in the first place. Uh, I, did you rubber stamp it, my man? Because you're the director. Did you rubber stamp it? Uh, let's see. He wasn't the only member of the district to express embarrassment. The board's, vi the board's vice president, David Usavage, uh, I hope I pronounced that right, cringed when he saw the language of the letter he told the local ABC affiliate. Uh, the foster care issue, that just had me, Usavage told the station. I couldn't believe that's what it said. About 14% of families in the school district are below the poverty line, and around 10% higher than the rate of the state of Pennsylvania, according to the census reporter. But Charles Coslett, another board member who is also the lawyer representing the board, staunchly defended the letter and its message. It merely lays out the options available to the district if people continue to ignore their parental responsibility and the nutritional needs of their minor sons and daughters, he told ABC News. These parents need to look in the mirror. This matter isn't going away merely because delinquent debtors make West Valley, the Valley West, the bad guy. I don't know why I said West Valley. Ah, the rest of the article goes on telling, talking about the school lunch program and... And a, a quote from uh, Crystal Fitzsimmons, the director of school and out of school programs, uh, time programs at FRAC, um, you know, recommends reaching out to families, helping them apply for free or reduced price lunches, that sort of thing, um, that sort of thing. Or I have a better idea than just offering free or reduced lunches to families um, who can't pay. How about you take some of that tax money, raise them if you have to, you know who to raise them on. <laughs> if I have to tell you, this might be your first show. So raise them on the 1%. <laughs> use that tax money and make sure the schools have the money to feed their kids. In fact, year-round. Let's make that a year-round thing where children can go in for breakfast, lunch, maybe even dinner, depending depending on your area and, the, and your needs, to help keep those kids fed. That way, if their parents, for whatever reason, can't, not because they won't, because they can't, maybe because they're always working, or maybe that, that Amazon job is not paying them enough to be able to feed their family. And, and the first person the first person who unironically says, oh, you know, they should have kept the legs closed all that time. Fuck you. Because you're probably, mm. this, you would probably, the, in my experience, it's mostly been people who would say that, would also say, that if you get pregnant, you should carry that child to, you know, you should carry that fetus to term. You know, mm -hmm. pro-life, anti-sex uh, uh, birth control. Basically is what I'm getting at there. But, point of this, point of this thing, you, th th this whole idea of taking your kid, taking kids away from parents because the school is not paid. Maybe the parents are having problems paying for their own food to begin with. It's not like they're like, oh, we're going to fuck over the school. <laughs> no, that's not what they're doing, by and large. And if there are parents, it's not enough to make that much of a dent. It really isn't. So it's, it's you're punishing kids for something that their parents are not able to do. Again, maybe that work is just not getting paid enough or barely getting by as it is. So thus, raise taxes on the 1%, give that money to the schools, and allow them to have a more robust lunch menu. How How is putting extra pressure on the foster care system going to solve any of this? It's punishing the poor. They don't care. That's what I get out of it. Uh, cat? Like, so first off, like... The idea that children are required to go to school. You are required to send your child to school. Mm -hmm. It blows my mind that schools are not required to provide for those children that are being forced to go there. Like, you'll get in trouble if your kid's not in school. Like, you'll get fined if your kid doesn't go to school. But if you are going to get in trouble, no matter what, like... Like, if you don't have money, you don't have money. You know? Like, fuck. So, why why are why are parents... 
being told you need to pay for things for this thing that we're forcing your child to go to. Now, I think all kids should have to go to school. I'm not arguing against right. education or anything. Yeah. I'm just saying it seems like if you're forcing somebody to do something, you should at least take some fucking accountability in there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't understand our country, like, we all agree that we need education and we want to be good in education. We just, as a country, don't want to spend money on education. We don't want to pay our teachers worth a damn. We don't even want to hire the best teachers because I had some teachers in school who should not have been being allowed to be anywhere near children. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Pedophiles. Um, (laughs) And, like, we didn't get new textbooks pretty much ever. Like, our schools are crumbling. Um, but but this whole thing about feeding our kids, we barely feed the kids who can pay for it. The food is so fucking mm. bad. And then you want to, like, charge them for junk? Really? It just blows my mind how poorly our education system functions. And this whole, like, you, you need... You, First off, like, I don't understand how kids get food without paying for it because that shit wouldn't have flown in, in, in my school. I don't, I don't know what processes other schools had, but in my school, you had to pay somebody. You had to pay a cashier in order to get food on your plate. Yeah. So there was no, like, unpaid stuff as far as I know. But some people might, like, have food passes that get you X number of meals a year or something like that, and they exceed them or whatever. I don't know how it all works. <coughs> but, yeah. like, if you're going to force kids to be there, you should be providing for them. Like, this is not a difficult concept. If parents are going to le- get in legal trouble for not sending their kids there, then like the schools should get in legal trouble for not providing them a safe and uh, like learning environment yeah like like and part of safety is food yes like that sounds kind of ridiculous but people do stupid shit when they're hangry oh yeah Mm -hmm. you know like like they'll they'll go off and mouth off to a teacher or or they'll start slamming on some author that they had no idea who it was by using a british accent (laughs) to to mock him from even though he's from wisconsin you know i mean (laughs) <laughs> but also like like it's unsafe to go without food like like you are in risk of your health and and if your parents can't provide that but they're being forced to send you there like then you should be responsible for making sure that that kid doesn't pass out in third grade math or whatever yeah uh, just the american school system other ladies countries and gentlemen. do this better than us i hope i hope other countries do this better than well, us. let's find out michelle are, are, are other countries better better than us Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As a rule, but in this case, probably too, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think back to my... Because I, I flipped back and forth between sometimes having fat lunch and sometimes having school dinner. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember why I did that. I think maybe sometimes I asked for lunch. Um, and I don't remember having to pay for it myself so i i I guess maybe it was a sign up scheme or or something or maybe we call off over three dinners i don't honestly remember but i also what i can remember is every kid getting a a tray of food or they have their lunch box and i don't remember hearing anyone complaining about being hungry um, I even remember a couple of times going up for seconds, like especially the cold custard. I, I liked the cold custard as a kid, mm-hmm. um, you know. And you know, the, I remember the dinner ladies being nice, you know, quite chatty. Um, so I honestly, for again, like pre eleven, um, you know, that I, I, which I assume is the age, age range we're talking about. I, I just remember going in and getting. Sometimes I'd have a dinner, school dinner. Sometimes I'd have had lunch. I don't ever remember paying for it. When I got to secondary school, then that's when money started exchanging hands. But again, if I had the money, yeah, you know, you'd, you'd get the tucked um, shop and do um, a snack, or you'd have a lunch. I, I honestly, I think I flip between pat lunch uh, and school dinners very regularly. And if I, yes, once I went up to secondary school, I was. I was paying for it, but you know, mm-hmm. that money my parents gave me. Yeah. If there were kids on a scheme, I wasn't aware of it. 
Hmm. Um, and I don't think I've ever had a school dinner that I didn't enjoy. Like, maybe there were sometimes there was stuff that I didn't like as much as other stuff. But I don't think I ever had a, like a really bad lunch. Like I had, I, you know, went back to class hungry or just, you know, couldn't eat anything. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, sorry, the memories are fuzzy, but okay. I don't ever remember anyone being hungry or upset or you know, being threatened with foster care. Yeah, it wasn't, <laughs> I know it wasn't like that when 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 I was more in like middle school, high school. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, granted. You know, I was comparatively well off in comparison to others because military brat and everything. Mm. But and and even then, at sometimes we were able to apply for getting uh, reduced and free lunches too. Um, yeah. So, and I know good and well that if I left that lunchroom hungry, it was my own damn fault. <laughs> but mm. that's but that's not what this is. That this particular thing is parents who can't do the thing mm. or or whatever. So and the punishing parents for can't. Yeah. So and and that's again like Kat said, you know, it, the school should take the responsibility if if it's going to be mandatory to go to school, then the school needs to step up and take care of a few things while they are in charge of these students. Mm. Yeah. So from that from that we're going to go to something considerably lighter. <laughs> uh, out of Detroit. Which you may be wondering, wait, Detroit? That shit? Oh, how, what, what light can you get out of that? Well, let's let's find out. Authorities say two Detroit city workers were injured. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> after fireworks went off under toilet seats at a garage where fire equipment is repaired. Police say the men, ages 59 and 41, suffered unspecified injuries and were treated at a hospital follow, following the Wednesday morning incidents. A police report describes the fireworks as some kind of poppers and says they were placed at under at least one toilet seat. It says the victim sat down and set off the poppers. Oh my god, somebody actually does that. <laughs> okay. Um, Kat, I assume you know what poppers are, right? Because it's... Um, are those like the ones that you throw at the ground and then they make a noise? Yes. Or which, which one are poppers? Yeah. Okay. I'll be calling caps. Okay, so yeah. Caps, poppers, same thing. I, I, I have heard of this being an actual prank that could be done. You know, you just put it right under the I toilet seat. I see that on television. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it, it, it's it's something that's to be done. And how the hell were they injured? I mean, did they just, I, I'm, I'm imagining how they could be injured. Um, either A, somebody put it on, put them down wrong and, well, their junk got damaged. I don't know how. Or the, they were shocked so much that they kind of just like, you know how like you sit down and, and you feel something that you're not supposed to feel down there and you suddenly stand up, stood up too yeah. quickly. And of course, they were going to sit on the toilet. So their pants are around their ankles. They're going to fall. <laughs> As you say, they definitely slid off and hit their heads or something. Yeah. Oh. So I, I, could, I could see where the injury would come from. But that's honestly, that's when it comes to pranks like this, that's one of the risks that one of the risks that you kind of have to understand could happen. Mm. Um, even though most of the time you hear about things like this, it's just a little whoop and, and, and you're and everybody's OK. Although one person really wants to beat the shit out of somebody else at them for a few moments. <laughs> but beyond that, everybody's usually OK. This is one of those times where it was not OK. <laughs> Uh, I mean, maybe one of the dudes poured gasoline all over himself before he went in on this. Like, <laughs> maybe he was immolated. We don't know. That could be. That could be. But the unspecified, unspecified injury is what really is. It's the only drive of this conversation. Is how the hell did these guys get injured from like little caps? Yeah, <laughs> I'm very curious. Just, wow. And and they do. And again, the article does specify they were placed under, so it's not like they sat directly on the damn things. You know, and had skin mm. contact. Uh, just wow, <laughs> prank gone wrong. <laughs> oh, oh. So, so uh, do do either of y'all have anything you want to add to that, or are we pretty much good on that one? I, I'm, no, I'm not the mystery, sure. I think, is what sells it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so. Uh, I think, uh, considering the time, I mean, we're, we're already running long, so I think this one is going to have to be our last one. 
And I'm going for this one because there is a very, very, I, I have a very good burn in mind for this particular one. And, and you'll know it when we get there. Um, out of Florida, because, of course, uh, a Florida attorney who was arrested on Tuesday after allegedly driving under the influence fumed, fuck you, I'm a lawyer, at a deputy while being detained, police say. James Stanley, 61, had an open bottle of rum on his lap when stopped by deputies from the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office in Point Verde Beach, southeast of Jacksonville, according to an arrest report re obtained by local news. It said he smelled of alcohol and had slurred speech. So it was more like, fight you, I'm a lawyer! Uh, Stanley, who was booked for driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs at roughly 3.10 p.m., was first reported by a member of the public who spotted a black Mercedes swerving while driving on the road. The suspect told the St. John's deputy he had been drinking since 9 a.m. God damn, dude. Uh, what time was the incident? Uh, 3.10 p.m., so 15 10. Jesus! Yeah. Uh, so he had been drinking for a good six hours. Oi. Uh, I'm fucked up, he said, blaming the alcohol consumption on, on an ongoing divorce. The situation the situation escalated after Stanley was able, unable to walk properly and refused to comply with police sobriety te tests. Fuck you! I'm a lawyer, you dumb shit! I'm not doing the exercises! Fucking arrest me, he responded, according to the re police report. I just do want to note that the article itself censors itself. I'm just making my best guess. <laughs> Uh, the attorney of the Jacksonville-based law firm Myers and Stanley allegedly lashed out after the officer suggested that failing to comply with the test wouldn't have helped his own legal case. At one point, Stanley gave up on the procedure, saying, Nah, just take me to jail. Oh. Uh, and af even after he got to the jail, he, he still protested one last notable thing. You're one stupid fucker if you think I'm not entitled to a lawyer. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he was held on a thousand dollar bond, released at approximately or well, one ten p.m. Uh, yesterday when this article was posted, uh, according to inmate records. And I've just got to ask: Is this is this was this was this guy on the short list to represent Vic Mignogna? Because what? Because if you haven't been following it, his lawyers are so fucking incompetent. Oh my god. Oh. I have so many thoughts about Vic Mignogna's whole Yeah, thing. a lot of us do. <laughs> Just, I, I also do want to share that in an update, he's, he, he is trying to sue, like, several people, including Funimation. And from what I'm gathering on social media, he is basically, he is basically implicating himself when everything that they are saying he has done. Oh, yeah. Like, you stupid fucker! <laughs> I, I know some things. I have been told some things. Um, and I have been in some contact with some people that I cannot go into much mm -hmm. detail about. Right. But the public information out there, if you read his deposition, is basically that the things that he swore up and down that he didn't do, he basically admits to do. Yeah. So it's like... And also that if you donated money to the GoFundMe for him, it's kind of a scam. Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, but yeah, I, I just, I, I, uh, yeah, like I said, I just wanted to put that story in there just to run that on, on Vic Mignogna because fuck him. He's an idiot. And, and I thought this story was going to end with the lawyer. You know, I, if you, I, I'm entitled to a lawyer. I'm representing myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he could, he, he could represent himself, <laughs> you know. He would, have, he would be a fool for a client, but, you know, he, he tried to pull a Gomez Adams, and, and we, we saw how that turned out when Gomez tried it. Uh, but, yeah, so... <laughs> oh, with all of that, this has been... Damn. Oh, God. I don't even know how long it's going to be before I get to put the mid, mid roll stuff in, too. I say mid roll stuff, break stuff, whatever. Uh, yeah. So, and... We're recording this on Sunday because, and Niantic in its infinite wisdom has decided, hey, we're going to have Community Day on Sunday this month. Fuck you. Uh, but at least it doesn't start at 3. It starts at like 4 o'clock my time. So that, that's that's one of the easier things to deal with. So we're going to get out of here <laughs> this week. Because so. you want to go shiny hunting. <laughs> yes. We, I am going to go shiny hunting. Um, Kat, you probably won't be shiny hunting, but if we wanted to talk to you on the interwebs, where could we find you? 
Oh, you can find me on Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And if you uh, are interested in listening to my other shows, I, uh, I record other podcasts. I swear to Christ, I can't think today. Um, <laughs> uh, what the Fuck with Josh Hadley over at 1201beyond.com and Nerd to the Third Power on YouTube and iTunes and all that good stuff. Sweet! Uh, and Michelle, where could we find you? Uh, you can find me on YouTube. It's Phoenix11. Uh, Twitter is also at Phoenix11, P H E O N I X 1 1. And I've recently got two new subscribers, so yay! Hey! And me, if you want to find me and follow me on social media where my voice is not quite as tired, uh, you can find me on the Twitters, the Tumblrs, the Instagrams, the YouTubes at Gomer21XX. Uh, we do have a. Uh, stuff for the show as well the show thespian talk does have its own youtube channel just search for thespian talk you'll find it there you can also find us on all your favorite podcast apps spotify apple itunes and all that good shit and all of that is through anchor anchor anchor.fm just you can hit look us up on there as well and of course if you want to listen if you want guaranteed uh if you want a guaranteed way to be able to listen to the show as they go up uh go to rtgomer.com and every show goes up at about 7 p.m. Central Time every Monday. And we even have a little thing that you just click and you sign up for a newsletter. And it'll let you know that when, when new posts go up, not just for me, but from everybody else, such as Diva and uh, Mikey Gleason and all of them. So mm-hmm. so that is all really good stuff. Um, and, of course, the show also has its own Discord, which should be in the doobly-doo of, at the very least, the entry on the site, if not also the YouTube one. The audio-only ones that go out to the podcast apps. Anchor has had some issues with me wanting to put extra-long descriptions on it, so they're a little bit more truncated. But eh, that's, that's what happens. And, of course, if you want to help support this show, you can go over to patreon.com slash gomer one double x And, and of course, I also do pixels and sprites and all of that. Go to my Etsy store. Pix... Uh, God, what is the name of it? That, that, is, that is bad. I should have that <laughs> on hand. Like, like, like Pixel Emporium Gifts. That is the name of it. Just search for that on Etsy. You will find stuff that I've done. I need to update it with a few other things that I have also been working on. And, of course, if you're in the Portland, Oregon area, uh, every Saturday they have the uh, – every every weekend they have the Saturday market where uh, my friend and, and companion uh, Mel Paradise goes and she sells the sprites and my sprites are among her stuff. So you can also, if you're in the Portland area, you can go check that out as well. Uh, and of course, our title card is done by the lovely and talented Becky Hopkins, and her stuff is in the doobly do as well. But if you don't want to be looking at that, go to becky-hopkins.com, and all of her information will be there. Uh, I really should shout. I really should shout out the two of them more often. But, but I've been rambling long enough. We need to get out of here. So, <laughs> until next time. Thank you guys for listening. This has been Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the cat and Michelle signing off.